Expo 2020 for the announcement that was done uh, on November 12th. Well, a very exciting announcement, and we've already discussed this here today or uh, uh, slightly earlier. There's a lot of interest in this region and the majority of the, the information that is being put out there and um, also what people are asking questions about are two completely different things. On one side of the spectrum, there's a lot to talk about high powered vehicles, um, lots of interest here on the high power vehicles and you touched on sports cars and then completely the other side we've got sustainability mobility and electricity and the electric vehicle and hybrid vehicles as well very much being spoken about not just on a daily basis but here at the motor show on an hourly basis so tell us what's the background with nissan and electric vehicles because we know from inside the industry, how big and how important Nissan are. But tell us in your own words for people who don't understand how important it is to Nissan. Look, this region is very important to us, and uh, we've been here for more than more than 60 years in the, in, in the region, and uh, our history go back to a long time ago with the Datsun brand. So. Uh, if I want to talk about uh, this region and you know EV and obviously high-powered cars, I think we need to stay focused on what's working now and eventually put strategies in place what about to come. So EV doesn't need to be boring, and you know the Blade Rider eventually is a presentation of having a sports car that's run on battery. Uh, the Leaf that we have launched today, it's a C sedan, but it happened to have an EV. So it's a power train chain. Instead of having petrol, you have an EV. And it's a pretty normal car. It's a C sedan, four doors, and it looks pretty good. And it's in line with, it's our, it represents our vision about the Nissan fuels and lines. So uh, EV is here to stay, and EV is here to grow. Uh, obviously, uh, to grow in this region, I would say in Dubai, you need to set policies and infrastructure. So with policy, we've seen the government taking a lot of steps here to, uh, to facilitate uh, EV in terms of legislation, in terms of providing the incentive needed. It has been announced a month ago uh, about, you know, uh, you don't have to pay SALIC, uh, you have free charging, free registration. And also we've seen with DIWA that we are under another, you know, 200 charging station uh, that will be uh, put in place here in, 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 the, in the country. And when you go to the malls, you see some of the obviously plug in the places, you know, stations that have been put in place. So the more infrastructure will grow, uh, the more you will see EVs. Obviously, uh, Dubai at the forefront of it. Uh, we've seen other countries taking uh, more drastic measures in terms of policies, for instance, in Jordan, because of the high cost of fuel. So there is zero, there is no duty on EVs and hybrid, and we see a much higher penetration. So we believe. Uh, I think uh, cities will be congested. A lot of people move to cities, and I'm talking 2030, 2050s. Cities will grow, people move to cities. There will be a lot of pressure on the environment, there will be a lot of pressure on, on air and pollution. And eventually, I think with the EV, it's a, we provide a good platform where you really have a zero emission, zero emission, and you make your part and contribution to be able to provide clear environment and you know, uh, less, less polluted environment. So, if you look at the investment happening globally, in 2016, around 250 million has been spent globally uh, on renewable energy. Where, at the same time, on uh, fossil oils, which is fuel, I mean, the energy that we know today, less than 130 billion. So the spending is there, and uh, the focus is there. And your question about what will happen, it's a gradual. You will not see a move into EV and to, you will not see a huge penetration in a few years' time. It's a gradual move, people will get used to it. When the more EVs will look like a regular cars and they provide the same, uh, I would say, plat the same uh, capabilities and platform, people will move on. And uh, previously the EVs were like a bit, I would say, maybe alienated in a bit of hate or like shape. Today we see it more blending with, uh, with any with any other cars that you see, you see on you see on the street. So for Nissan, we have our strategy in terms of Nissan intelligent mobility. We talk about you know mobility in terms of our sustainability. And obviously, as an alliance, we have uh, I think we have around 10 to 12 EV to come in the next uh, in the next uh, few years. 
and just to show our, I would say, commitment to that technology in the future. Certainly, lots of information there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, does anybody here currently drive an electric vehicle? Does anybody? A little bit later on, but the question is, will electric cars save us? Now, what are we asking when will electric cars save us? We spoke about our carbon footprint. You've touched on it, how much Nissan has really worked hard to make sure that boxes are being ticked every step of the way, which is interesting because one of the boxes that we need to tick for Expo 2020 is reducing our carbon footprint, which is something that Nissan's brand is certainly doing. When you speak about um, coming in line with a lot of uh, government uh, procedures, how do you how do you do that? Do you have to sit down with gov government authorities and be able to say that this is what we can do and this is how we can improve the environment? I mean, you mentioned about saving us. Uh, I think the whole uh, emission is not only car related, you know, obviously cars have a contribution, but it's an ecosystem. We've seen in the region uh, also going to cleaner, uh, for instance, uh, power energy. So we've seen in Dubai moving to nuclear. Uh, you know, electricity and power versus being on fuel. So we need to tackle so many segments that really uh, create, you know, or generating this pollution. Cars are, is one of them. Also for the region here, the more you save on fuel, the more you sell it outside, the more you make money. And obviously, I mean, we have 365 of days of the sun, so we can easily power your car in the future from the sun to solar. So there's so much technology you can uh, you can you can look at doing the health food. So I don't think it's a question of saving. I think it's a question of like working uh, on the ecosystem to figure out how we can, as a government or as a country, you know, see how we can reduce our carbon footprint. So our role is actually is more to influence. So when we be asked and when we go and we visit, uh, I think ministers and deputy ministers and policy makers is to share with them best practices done in other countries. What can we do? What can be done in this country? How can we implement it? And uh, what will be the right step to do? Because obviously taking quick decisions will not lead to the prevention to the desired result most of the time. You touched on um, the success in other countries, and in particular the Nissan LEAF has been hugely successful. What do you think it is about the LEAF in particular that has made it such a great success? I think we were the first manufacturer in 2010 to bet on electric cars. And, uh, uh, you know, LEAF, first generation LEAF, which is, you know, didn't come to our region except Jordan, uh, is the top seller. You know, we have sold more than 300,000 units in 49 countries, with the market leader by far in, in, any, in any country. We know how to do it. From a customer angle, this car has run more than 3.6 billion kilometers with no major accident. So we have the experience and we know how to do it and you know, it's not the first time we're doing it and with the leaf, the, the new leaf that, uh, that we're launching, you know, we have introduced today to, to Dubai, it's a showcase how you can take a very reliable technology then add it to a very, uh, I think, uh, accepted or desired design and to make it acceptable to the wider, to the wider audience. I certainly feel that as Dubai develops, and I know that you've been in the region for many years now, I can certainly see that this city is really turning into an international city in terms of of it being quite congested and busy within the, the inside of the city. We're now starting to see uh, suburbs developing. Is that going to benefit electric vehicles in your opinion? Uh. I'm sure because the government has put some uh, requirement, you know, uh, the Dubai government, they said they want to see by 2020, 10% of their vehicles to be EV or hybrid. Then they set another target by 2030 to be slightly higher in terms of penetration. So the government is pushing to you to, for their fleet to be more on the, I think, on the zero emission and the clean energy. And when the government will start, I think the retail side will follow. So today, consumer, when they look at the car, they will worry about, you know, if I'm stuck, what will happen, what is the infrastructure, all, the, all that what you need. What we need to know is, if I go to the mall, can I plug? I know at home I can, but people living in buildings, what do I do? We don't, there is no plugs. And, uh, uh, you know, people do travel, and eventually what will happen? So I think the more you work on the infrastructure, the more people it happen. And frankly, 
if you look at, I think the mobile phone, 10, 15 years ago, the smallest was the better. And that's where we were. Then suddenly we moved to the larger, the better, with the big screen. And eventually we've seen uh, these things, you know, expanding in a, in, a, in a very short period of time. So nothing would stop us imagining that you could easily go to a station in the future, remove your battery and put a new battery so batteries could become small, you plug and play, five, ten minutes you have a new battery, versus plugging and move on. So things can happen, you know, I think uh, it's up to people's imagination and uh, I think uh, implementation, but I could see it happen, you know, what we've seen in movies in the 10, 15 years, you can never imagine this will happen. I think we're seeing it now. So we could see flying electric vehicles in the future? Uh, no, no, I haven't said flying, I said changing <laughs> batteries. <laughs> Let's go over some of the questions that come up frequently, and of course one of them is, is to do with batteries. Um, what's your take then on that age-old question of, well, how expensive are the batteries? How economical are the batteries? Because, as you said, launched in 2010 for the LEAF, that means that you've got enough time behind your belt now to be able to answer those questions with confidence. Look, to make it, uh, when they launched it in the 49 countries, there was a big incentive program. So you buy a LEAF, then you get some incentives up to $7,500, then you have a free party and what have you. In our country here, we have 5% tax duty, and uh, so from a financial angle, the incentives are not financially enough, you know, to make the car probably attractive. So the financial angle maybe is not the only part that we can really look at. I think uh, 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 driving the contributing to be part of a community who wants to have a zero emission, less polluting uh, cars, is something we need to all, uh, I think, be part, be part of. So it's not only a financial, I think, play, uh, but we need to move on. How can we help save our environment? How can we help reduce emission? How can we help make our city less uh, polluted? And that's, I think, that's a concern for, for everybody. And I think it will come because there will be more congestion, there will be more cars, there will be more coming, there will be cities developed. I mean, you can see Dubai, you know, you see the Dubai South, you know, obviously happening around the Expo, uh, you know, you will have a city after the expo. So I think you will need to be part of that uh, of that movement. And we see the millennials are much more, I would say, concerned about how can they contribute to, to, to that, uh, I think, movement. You're absolutely right. There's definitely a big push about being more community driven. And I, for one, have had the opportunity to test electric vehicles. And there's definitely that feeling of, that you're doing something right, you're doing something to improve not only the community but also our environments as well. So when it comes to looking at the bigger picture, for those people who haven't yet had the opportunity to drive an electric vehicle, what would you say are the main differences between an electric vehicle, a hybrid and a traditional combustion driven car? You know, the combustion everybody knows, like everybody's making their, their engine much more efficient. By kept by keep optimizing their you know the fuel system and energy. When it comes to hybrid, they call it hybrid. It's a double mode. You know, you still have an engine, then you have a hybrid. So from a hybrid, you can I'm missing the savings in terms of fuel. You can make 15, 20 percent depending on the hybrid mode, which mode you have. Uh, for EV, it's totally different. So I will invite people. You know, eventually once we we'll have that uh, leaf uh, for test drive available. Uh, to, to really test drive the car. There is hardly any difference between between uh, the experience. Obviously, it's much more quieter. Uh, you have much more torque, so the torque you get is much more quicker, and eventually, uh, it's much more easier to, to manage. The moving parts are much less, uh, battery stay longer, and it can do a lot in the future if you want to use the battery to other technology. So from a if you look at it from a uh, performance angle, I mean, once you hit the torque, the torque will continue. So you don't have this management in terms of torque in, torque up. So, I mean, uh, that's what you have. So, uh, with the new LEAF, I'm not sure anybody... The plan is to, when you drive the car, you will not know you're driving any vehicle. So, it's pretty much a normal drive. And I, I actually love the feeling of some of the previous electric vehicles anyway. To me, it's something that I really like, the driving style. And as you said, nice and quiet, definitely in built-up areas, it gives you that sense of 
almost tranquility as you're driving along and there's heavy traffic and lots of smoke around you and you just feel so comfortable in this quiet, safe little cabin of yours. When, when we talk about safety, um, do you have to compromise safety in any way because you're trying to put safety features in an electric vehicle as opposed to a traditional car? Absolutely not. Today, uh, with the leaf uh, that uh, we have here, this car is much more than an EV for us. If this car represents the whole Nissan Intelligent Community and all the features we can think of. So today we talk about a lot of technology. You talk about the, uh, I mean, we talk about the bird through the 360 camera. The Leaf have it, and so many other Nissan cars have it. We talk about lane departure. The Leaf has a lane departure with all the warning, and most of our cars today they're coming with a lane departure. We talk about the intelligent cruise control, where they can help you with the brake. Uh, we have that. We have it on the Leaf. Uh, you're talking about, I mean, there's so many of the technology that we have, we're adding it to the Leaf because it's, it's not like it's an EV car, because this is the technology we want to push and we have it today. So the Leaf, they have introduced the e-pedal, which is, you know, you click the buttons and eventually you can use one pedal. And this is to help you with the traffic, so you can use one pedal eventually, so you, when you release your, your, your foot, it will stop. So, and you can control it. And in Japan, we have the, the, you know, the autonomous pilot, which is a car, you know, you can, you know, keep your hands in the way, and eventually the car will drive with all the radars available. So, I think the technology, the EVs and all the technology and the features that we have under the Nissan Intelligent Mobility, they, I think they complement each other in terms of what, what you need to have in the future. And almost, I think, definitely for, you touched on it earlier, millennials. Let's see how millennials, how many millennials are out here. Shazan, would you class yourself as a millennial? Almost. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. I think the younger generation, they just get it, don't they? They know where we're going in terms of saving us in the future. And almost those of us who are slightly older, I'm not putting myself in that category, but those of us who are slightly older, maybe are slightly worried about the changes and like to stick tra to tradition, tradition. What would you say is your biggest demographic, especially looking at in particular today the launch of the LEAF? Who do you think that's going to appeal to in this region in particular? You know, this region, if you look at the demographics, it's a lot of young people. So, I don't want to say anything, but you know, you all know that 50% of the population is below 24. So we're looking at a very young demographic. We have a lot of early adopters. This region is about early adopters. These people are about getting the latest and latest technology. So uh, the, the way we see it, you know, when we start offering this car, we have a lot of early adopters who come just for the technology sake. Then we have the people, the green people, you know, who want to be part of, you know, you want to be part of this whole movement. And they represent a big chunk of the population. You have the tech guys, which is, you know, the guy who are techy, you want to know about technology, you want to do this, they definitely would like to, to drive this car. Then eventually you go to your, to your uh, I think, much more of a normal customer who wants to, to, to look at something new and uh, he believes that he needs something different. So I think uh, it varies between, between, uh, between the people and, uh, and even though they present a small chunk of the demographics, but I think uh, they're more, much more influential in what they do and what they say. So it will take time, you know, I think, to people to get into it, uh, but not much. And uh, the pricing announced for the LEAF, the, the current one that you saw here, in Japan, $29,999,000. So you're looking at a very much, uh, I would say, attractive and, uh, I mean, acceptable price. So we're not in the $100,000. So it's a car that, that is probably, be, you know, uh, accessibility is, is there in terms of pricing. It's not, a, it's not a big barrier. I'm not saying this is a price here, this is a global one, but eventually it will be around uh, probably this line in the future. And of course, don't forget here we speak a lot about, you know, we're quite lucky with the, the fuel costs in this region, but something that I, uh, I feel is a big benefit with electric vehicles is the ease of parking. Honestly, it's been absolutely fantastic. Take an electric vehicle, you will always manage to find an electric vehicle parking slot when you go to the mall, which is absolutely fantastic. Not to mention the amount of time I've realized that I spend queuing at petrol pumps in this city in particular. Um, what has been 
when, certainly when it comes to electric vehicles, what has been the most exciting advancement in technology that you've seen since you've been with Nissan? Uh, I've been with Nissan for two years and uh, I think the way they endorse technology and they make it happen is, is amazing. So we talk about the Nissan Intelligent Mobility as a, as a platform and as an umbrella. And you've seen so many things happening in your time. So we have launched the X-Trail last month actually. And you go to the X-Trail and it has an array of technology from the C60 camera to the late departure to the, uh, I think, uh, intelligent mirror. So today you flip the mirror and you obviously have a live, uh, I would say, a real view. So I think uh, putting this technology into the cars, uh, you know, in the car business, if we have it, these things tend to be, tend to take, I think, longer time. So I think embracing this technology and make it available to all, most of the segments of the car, not only the expensive one, was a tremendous work. So everybody can really feel and uh, touch and uh, I think enjoy this technology. You take it on an Altima or you take it on a Kicks, which is, you know, at 50, 60,000 dirhams, or you go to an X-Trail, you know, if you take it fully at like 130, 20,000 or 130,000 dirhams, you can have all this technology. So you don't really have to pay big bucks to really, uh, I think, uh, be safe or feel safe or enjoy these technologies. I'm glad that you brought up some other manufacturers because uh, Nissan aren't the only manufacturer that do electric vehicles. How good is it to be able to have other manufacturers out there to offer that competition? How much does that push you as a brand? Uh, I think I would go back when we started in 2010. It was a company bet on EVs. And I think uh, we were the first to have a car that, being common, that has been in the market across 49 markets being the market leader with no major accident in seven years time. So uh, I think and this bet has paid off and that's where we are today with another car which is uh, I think with the plan is to double uh, our sales from 300 obviously to 600 with that car. So uh, obviously uh, competition always helps. Uh, we look at that, they look at us. Uh, we can always, obviously, learn. Uh, there are steps I think we make before and ahead. I mean, there are steps we choose to not do. And, uh, but every, I think each company has its own strategy, you know, and you, you tend rarely to be impacted by some, I think, uh, I would say, tactical action. I think you need to exactly say what you want to do, stay the course, be flexible enough to adjust, but I think uh, keep the in picture that in mind. You touched on it very earlier on in our conversation about electric vehicles not being boring. I've actually never thought of an electric vehicle as being boring. Even a golf cart excites me. Um, but what does the future hold? Because you did mention, you know, that there are race cars out there. In fact, we've got Formula E, obviously, yeah. which is, has been big in the last couple of years. But what can we look forward to in the future? Are we going to see high-powered off-road electric vehicles or you know, sports car electric vehicles within the Nissan brand? So we did two things. We did Leaf and we did Blade Glider. And obviously Blade Glider's presentation of what a sports car can be. The car has been running in Dubai and uh, we've used our, uh, uh, we, we had our production in Dubai to showcase our association with Expo. So you can see the video and you can see that car driving around in Dubai. So that to showcase that, you know, a, a race car doesn't, I mean, doesn't have to be boring when we talk about uh, about the EVs. In Tokyo, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the IMX. It's uh, like another representation of uh, what a, a 4x4, or maybe, you know, 4x4 can be when it comes to, to EV with 650 as a horsepower. So, I mean, we have a lot to showcase in the future uh, about what EV can do. The, the thing that we need to look at, you don't need to be boring, you need to be different. You know, I think we look at it as a different powertrain uh, for, for if, uh, EV is a different powertrain. However, we still need to build the passion, we need to keep innovating, 
people still need to be excited about cars. I mean, uh, and that's what drives uh, emotion. You know, you still 50% of the Porsche is is, is is emotion, and we need to we need to keep it. You know, people like what they see. They wanna enjoy the drive, and frankly, uh, you wanna you wanna keep it that way. Well, we're certainly looking forward to seeing what happens in the future, but we don't want it to come too quickly because we're enjoying everything that's going on now. Um, for those people who do want to come and have a look at your stand, tell us again what's on the stand and where about you're located. Yeah, I mean, we're just here, like a few minutes away from, from here, so we're, we're the first step. Uh, eventually, you know, uh, late rider and leaf, this is the hero of our product. I would invite you to see, to see it. The running videos, they talk about the Blade Rider, they're running in Dubai, this is our association with Expo. And for us, uh, on the SUV side, we have a lot. So we have the Patrol, we have relaunched the Super Savari, we have the five doors and three doors with some, I would say, desert uh, accessories and packages, which as you can see. You know, our famous Patrol is there, and you can see the new design of the Expo logo that will happen, you know, that will be going to have uh, on all the Nissan cars uh, with the Expo, they have a, I would say, a very impressive design and uh, quite, uh, I think, memorable. Then you have the new uh, Pathfinder, the new uh, X-Trail, the new Kicks, and uh, don't miss the, the Nismo line, so we have the Patrol Nismo and we have GTR Nismo with 600 horsepower, and another regular, sorry, GTR with, with much less, but let's talk about the Nismo uh, one. And, uh, uh, we do have uh, also uh, a, a Maxima, it's a midnight edition, it's an edition that we're launching here at, in Dubai. And please take a, take a close look at the GTR, the Guinness record, the one that we won the Guinness record last year in, in Fujairah, which is, you know, with the fastest drift, it's also displayed. That's an awful lot of uh, that's an awful lot of first and congratulations. That's really good. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open it to the floor and I'm going to pose the question. If we thank you very much, Zaid. I'm going to I'm going to pose the question actually. Um, and, and I know I'm sorry. I don't know your name, but I know you've been here all afternoon. So I'm actually going to pick on you first. I'll ask the question. Do you think electric vehicles will save us? And if yes, why? And if no, why not? It's a, it's, a, it's a tough one because there's lots to think about, but do you think it'll save us? Uh, it will save us time, it will save us on the road, it will save uh, petrol fuel consumption. At least this is what I see it. Uh, you're talking to a huge car enthusiast, a huge uh, drifting person, so having a quiet car is, isn't quite fulfilling. But uh, it's definitely quite something different when you drive an electric car. Um, you miss out on the acceleration, the, the, the push on the pedal definitely. But uh, there is a space for electric cars. It is the, the direction of the future. Um, so now I was going to say, so, so what's your name, sorry? Reem. Reem. So Reem's a big car buff. She likes her powerful car, she likes her drifting but wants to be responsible and think about carbon footprints and electric vehicles. Will there be a time in the future where these will be combined, where you get the thrill and excitement? Because yeah. I, I personally think you can get a lot of thrill and excitement from an EV anyway. That is time today, you know. We can invite Reem to uh, drive our Blade Rider. Reem's on the road today, she's already And she will get a lot of excitement and a lot of thrill. And that is... Uh, that is no different from any car she has. She's driving today. Actually, the power and the acceleration is there, and then much more impressive in a in a Leaf than what you have in your car, because the torque that you get it came in no time, and it's keep pushing. So uh, I don't think you'll miss on excitement, and that's what we at Nissan trying to do. You know, our motto is innovation that excite, and we want to keep our vehicle that way. We don't want to build boring vehicles at all that's not what we do here's a question then for those of you who are sitting here and i'm sure because we're at dubai international motor show we're all car enthusiasts in some way shape or form hands up those of you who have that kind of common i would say misconception that a uh, an electric vehicle is not going to give you as much excitement and power as a traditional powertrain right so lots of hands up Keep your hands up if you have also tested an electric vehicle. Okay, 
that's quite interesting. So what I would say to you is, given the opportunity, go and test an EV and then think about that question and then answer that question again because it does, doesn't it? It comes uh, up time Alex, again. Shall we, shall we find out what they thought of the uh, tested an electric car? Go on then. Who, who put the hand up? You did, sir, didn't you? What did you think of the electric car? Well, I like it. I drive a lot of electric cars in Stuttgart. Uh, you know, there's a car to go fleet of car sharing vehicles that is fully electric, so that's a good way how people can test it drive it and then the taste starts for something else. So I don't think that electric vehicles don't have this thrill. Because what you mentioned, the torque is there, you have acceleration, well it's quiet, but well you can do acoustic design yeah. and you know put something on top. You can use noise cancellation, you can also generate noise if it's needed. You can always put something on on the stereo that's just you know yes. extra noise if that's what you like. And actually this is also as you know one of the things, requirements before some traffic scenarios, car should make some noise so that we know it's coming, or at least we have another means of, uh, you know, uh, kind of giving this information to the pedestrian. So there's a lot of development there, I guess, and uh, I'm thrilled about it, but it's in, up there in the future. Great, thank you very much. Just a quick question, and do you, would you say that you, that you started with electric or has your thought process changed since driving electric vehicles? Obviously, Stuttgart is a place that's very prominent in pushing environmental friendly solutions. Oh, yes, it has. I mean, uh, before I ever you know, tested an electric vehicle or drove one, it's kind of a you know, mystery how it would feel. You have to really sit in one, you have to drive one. And I think it's very important that. You know, there's this option to um, familiarize with such a vehicle, for example, like using that in car sharing, um, because still the price barrier is there when you really buy one, and unless there are huge incentives. Um, so one has to test it, one has to feel it, one has to see if it's a good deal, if you can deal with the range of this vehicle, if it's the uh, right uh, stuff for daily use. But if this is there, a lot of people will like it. Thank you very much for that. When it when it comes to you know thinking about the way that driving is changing, and I kind of mean that you know I'm sure when Shazad did his driving test, you almost had to drive a, a manual vehicle, and it took some time to think about the actual um, prospects of driving and the feel of the car. I'm, now, glad, I'm glad you said I didn't have to crank up the car as well. I'm not that old. Crank <laughs> up the car and push it down the road. Um, but obviously there is a change, you know, there's a change in not only the way that cars are driven and the way that they're built, but also a lot of the focus nowadays tends to be on technology driven digitalization really within a vehicle. How much do you have to think about the change in driving styles as millennials come through and progress into that? I mean definitely on, on one of the pillars is connected vehicles. We're definitely moving into a connected vehicle to the to the network. Uh, we're definitely moving in the future to autonomous driving. A lot of things can be done by the car. Uh, you still, in, in a way, uh, you release the control or you can take control. So you're in the car, but you let the car do the work for, for you. Uh, connection is coming. So obviously, you can talk to your car, your car can do things uh, for you. Uh, you're connected to the network. So these things will come. I mean, that's what the millennial want. So a lot of lot of sharing will happen. So obviously you can see a lot of people buying the cars and eventually sharing the cars. So you can see a lot, lot of sharing is going to happen. Uh, the, the likes, the companies like Uber and whatever, they're there. I mean, you know, the sharing is there. You will see a lot of people driving from A to B, then another guy taking from B to C. Uh, you will see people eventually uh, renting their parking spots in like, you know, I think high-end areas. So I think all this will come. I mean, the way we know the, in the automotive industry, it will not be the same in 20 years. So we're going through a lot of disruption. And uh, I think we need, to, we need to accept it and we need to endorse it and we need to figure out how can we adapt to these new changes in the future versus, I think, uh, fighting it and saying it won't happen. And you see a lot of companies engaging in so many 
I think uh, uh, I would say uh, high tech companies or you know I think entrepreneurial company setting uh, I think offices in Silicon or I mean in so many places. So it's coming, you know. Definitely connected vehicles is to come. The sharing is is happening. So you, the more city is digested, the more look at it. I mean, if you look if you look at California today, the number of driving licenses is declining with the youngs. So people are no more really getting into driving, uh, you know, uh, schools, and they much more use the sharing with the young with the young population. Let me let me ask a question that Shazad might know that I actually don't even know the answer to myself. If you're a brand new driver, can you do your test in an electric vehicle or do you have to first off do your test in a traditional vehicle and then transfer? Hey, we're all stumped. Uh, I, I, I would imagine that if you're doing an automatic license, you'd be fine. But uh, as far as I know, there's no manual EVs at this stage. No. no. Yeah. So I guess if you're an auto, if you're driving an automatic car, then it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. You could probably do that. But it would be interesting to see because obviously in the future, our hope is that even driving schools will be using electric vehicles because of, as people are moving on to electric, there is a difference in the feeling of how you would drive uh, an electric vehicle. Well, yeah. I was going to say. I mean, one aspect of that might be, and maybe Father, you can uh, respond to this, is that do you? I mean, I drove uh, a BMW i3 in Europe. And you actually have to relearn your driving style a little bit because when you lift off the accelerator, the car will actually come to a halt. Mm. So do you find that actually people have to adapt a little bit? Yes, I mean, I drove the, the Leaf when I was in Japan with the e-pedal just to test the new technology. It will take you a couple of minutes to, to really understand that technology then it will become a second nature. So yes, you need to ad adapt and adjust to, to a little bit of the how the driving dynamics are. But fundamentally, there is no really a huge difference between a, a normal, I mean, a, I mean, a, a petrol car and uh, eventually an electric an EV. So in terms of driving school, it's all go back to policies. Where are the policies? What do we do? So how much is the penetration? Because if you get used to to electric you will not be able to deal with maybe a normal car somehow. So I think it's a bit early when we start talking about, you know, I think driving school and then we're still very much dominated with, with the current technology. And, you know, at best uh, EVs will go in the future 10, 15 percent, whatever the percentage will be depending on the countries. But we're still, a, a, you know, I think a petrol dominated industry and other technology will come and gradually they will grow. I, I almost feel that in the next five years we will start to see a lot more. I think I think the youngsters certainly are going to come through and want to go the EV route. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that because obviously your car is being on sale now. You and uh, Chevrolet are putting a car on sale. Tesla is already on sale. People are going to take the cars for a test drive. How are you going to cope with people driving these cars for the first time in this market where they have no experience of driving EVs? Will you be advising them or guiding them or you know training them before they get into the vehicles? I mean, once we put these programs in place, there will be I mean the normal training that we do for our uh, sales consultant, and there will be like tips on do and don't. So obviously, it's part of the whole launch. Uh, I would say program that we do when we launch a car. So obviously, with Leaf, we have most of the best practices coming. We've been doing it for so many years. So. All what we do, we take our experiences and we then we work and adapt it to our region. And of course, the more opportunity that we get to to change and you know drive these vehicles, we do, we've got a couple of questions from the floor. Let's just add go over. One thing I will say is. You're absolutely right in this change of electric vehicles and Shazad was saying about the difference, you know, this almost direct drive where you lift off and there's no kind of coasting. The first electric vehicle I had, this is the, this is the difference, the first electric vehicle I had, drove it home, thoroughly enjoyed it, got home, stopped, and then spent 15 minutes wondering how to switch it off and then had to Google <laughs> how to switch off an electric vehicle. I felt a little bit daft, now I feel even worse. Uh, sorry, gentlemen in the middle. Yeah, um, I have a comment where we talked about how it feels to drive an electric vehicle and how uh, you know people will uh, kind of uh, customize to, uh, to use it. One way what uh, really is totally different, at least at the moment, to the gasoline engine is that you have to really take care of your range. You have to plan your trip. 
uh, because the charging stations are not everywhere, so you have to do a complete blend from one to the other, at least when you are uh, driving between different metropolitan areas. And you also have to get accustomed to that you have different ranges if it's winter time, if it's summer time, so many parameters that influence the uh, charge of the battery and also the range. So also in my friend circle we had a lot of discussions on that. You know the drivers who plan their trip very well and then some things get disrupted and yeah they just made it the last 50 kilometers. So that is a little bit. It was going to change when there were charging stations, but still it's different from the gasoline engine where you at least know the next filling station is just across the border and um, where the uh, filling level is at least theoretically much easier to measure than the charge state of the battery. Do you, do you live here? Are you a resident in Dubai? No, no. I'm so this conversation... This, this topic has come up quite a lot, and one of the things we'll say is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Fadi, um, electric batteries tend to drain quicker in cold conditions, so we're very lucky to be in a hot environment. Also, we're in quite a small city, and as Fadi was saying, it's the, the structure, being able to structure the city to, um, to accept electric vehicles is something that often you'd think would take a long time, but in true Dubai fashion, Wherever you go at the moment, you seem to be able to find, certainly in a multi-story car park, uh, electric vehicle charging. Infrastructure will follow and it will develop. So I think uh, the government started here with D1 announcing around 200 charging stations. We've seen in all the malls, you can see uh, charging uh, stations. Uh, Abu Dhabi will follow because they have the same uh, direction. And frankly, we need to see the, the, pr the private uh, I think companies stepping in. Uh, a lot of, of the petrol station you can see here are maybe you know semi semi private in a way. So you could easily maybe see in the future that you can go to any I would say uh, gas station and you have this high speed I would say charging. So it could be. So it's all about the infrastructure. But I totally agree with you. The anxiety of uh, of uh, of mileage. You know uh, how long it will last. Where is my charging station? I mean, that's why, you know, everybody is investing in high-powered, I would say, long-range batteries and what have you. But still, you know, from a cost angle, they are still not that, uh, I would say, commercially viable. So, I mean, you go for a 80 watt or 100 watt and you see the price of the car going around $100,000. So I think the more we go into that technology, the more the cost of the, the battery will become much more, I would say, competitive and uh, much more technologically advanced and much more reliable. Fadi, thank you so much for joining us today. If you do want to go, and I'm sure you do, go and have a look at the Nissan stand. It's just round the corner in the next hall. Um, lots of interesting developments. So thank you so much, and we'll definitely be keeping an eye out on what's happening in the future. So don't forget, the next talk will be at 5 o'clock, um, and will be brought to you by, no, 6 o'clock, and will be brought to you by the guys from Motoring Middle East. Thank you so much for joining us. Any questions, please do come up and introduce yourself. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you.